everyone, it's Sarah from Nova Scotia. Welcome back to Colorful Creations. I'm gonna do a Dutch pour today on a pretty big canvas. It's 24 by 30. Well, the girl I'm doing it for, she likes more pastel colors. And um, I did convince her to use a couple darker colors. Like magenta is kind of the darkest I'm going. We wanna make sure there's lots of contrast. So here's the canvas. It's pretty big. Um, so I'm gonna do a white negative space. So that means I'm gonna cover it in white first and all my blank space will be white. Um, here's my colors. I just have them sitting on an old canvas. Just kind of give you an idea. So they're not too like light or anything like that, but I'll go through all the colors as I put them down. So there's a video, um, a link to a video in my description. If you wanna go watch that, it's my recipe. How I mix paints, I always use the same one, and then if I want a different consistency, I just add more or less water kind of thing. Um, so this is a little thinner than I would do for like, you know, if I was doing a ring pours or flipped cups or something like that, because I do want it to spread around with the hair dryer easily. I'll show you, it's like, there's really not much of a mound left if you drizzle it off the stick like that. So I just gonna pour that on. I'm gonna tilt this around to spread it out because I find it does a way better job. It gets more even and you don't end up with too much or too little. If you spread it with a spatula, it just kind of, kind of doesn't really go even. I mean, I mean some's gonna pour off, but that's what happens with fluid art. You know, I'm gonna add a little here. I'm gonna add more to this edge and that should be perfect. All right, a little more. Okay. I was gonna make sure my edges are covered with the white though. I mean, you can touch them up later, but it's much easier to do them in the beginning. Now, I have a ton of bubbles in here. I'm gonna try to get them out, but I'm having some issues with my torch today. I just put butane in it. I have to try to torch the bubbles on another one a few minutes ago and it kind of caught on fire. So that, we'll try it again. See? So I might not be able to pop the bubbles. A couple bigger bubbles, I'm gonna just pop. I don't wanna start off with any paint touching the edges because I find it makes a big blob like that and I don't want any lines to touch each other. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with my, this is a metallic brown. This is actually leftover paint. I did a painting with a bunch of metallics and black and this is what got scraped off onto the table. I scraped it up and mixed it together and this is what happened, so this works. So the next one I'm gonna put down is Copper. This is by Sergeant Art. It's really pretty. Next one is a Brilliant Blue by Artist Loft. Next one is Magenta. This is by Montmartre. This is Aztec Gold by Sergeant Art. We have a Light Lavender by Artist Loft, and I mixed a little bit of um, iridescent pouring medium in with this, so just give it a little shimmer. I like to do that with like really anything that doesn't already have metallic or iridescent. Especially if I'm gonna put it under resin. If I'm gonna put resin on it, like it just looks so much better. That shimmer. Uh, next one is Cerulean Blue. This is by Montmart. This is a regular gold by Sergeant Art. Last one is fluorescent pink by Deco Art. And I mixed a little white in with it to tone it down. And also that will help it be um, like less transparent. So hopefully it won't just like all wash away. 
I'll see when I start to um, blow the first bit of this out if the pink's going to stay. Because if it doesn't, I'll have to add more or something. All right, so this looks actually really pretty already. I'm going to just put a little tiny bit of white. I'm not sure if it'll really do much, but just kind of mix it. A little in there. And I'm going to just add a little around the outside of each of these. Just I want to make sure it, it can flow easily. Okay, so I have a hair dryer and I have an attachment on it. And I bought a set of these little attachments little plastic pieces from Amazon. This is what it looks like. This is the biggest of the three. It has a nice wide edge. I like that. And that just fits over the end of any hair dryer. I also have an airbrush that I like to use for little details. If I want to blow a little tiny bit here and there and I don't want to use a straw or my mouth because I get really winded, then I just use this. I don't add paint to it or anything. I just use the air that's coming from it. I want to keep as simple as possible. I want, I want lots of negative space. I find it really easy to overthink it and keep going and going because you want it to all be covered, but I want a lot of white to be left. So I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible and not go over it too many times. Okay, I like it so far. I'm gonna use my airbrush to blow a little more movement. keep it simple and not mess with it. So I'm going to take uh, just my paint knife here and scrape under the edges to get rid of the excess paint. At the same time I'm checking to make sure my corners are covered. Sometimes if you get a little too much paint up on the top of it when you're fixing your corners, I just take my airbrush and just blow a little bit back over. Right, let's have a look. I really like how these colors blended. It's pretty even all over. A couple little cells here. I'm scared to torch it because it caught on fire on me already. <laughs> so I hope hopefully she'll be happy. She wanted lots of white, so that's there. And here it is from the other side. Let me know what you think in the comments. Any suggestions, tips.
leave me a comment and like the video if you like it, of course. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. It really helps me out. So once this is dry and cured, I will add, I don't know if I'm gonna put resin on this because of the size of it, I'll, but I'll definitely be putting a, um, a nice varnish on it. So I'll show you that when it's all done. So I decided to go ahead with a resin on this anyway, just to make it extra nice. It looks really, really nice with all the iridescence and metallics on there. So I use magic resin for this. I normally use art resin and I do have a tutorial on that in the description if you want to watch it. But this is pretty similar. It's mixed one to one. I just find it a little more tricky um, with the bubbles. You really need to make sure it's warmed up first. Don't mix it cold. It's, it's really hard to mix and you can't get the bubbles out. So just mix it well and spread it across and it's self leveling. So it will sort itself out and then um, just let it sit for 24 hours. Make sure there's no dust going to fall on it and make sure the room is at least 20 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, <laughs> Celsius actually. Um, so actually what I did here, because normally with a canvas this size, it sags a little in the middle and it kind of pulls away from the edges. So your right around your edges will end up being bare. So I put this strip of tape and I have it just left a little above the edge. So it kind of created a dam. Um, it's really hard to tell from the video, but with this, I can push the resin all the way up to the edge and then just let it sit there for about half hour until it starts to harden. And then I just very carefully peeled the tape off and then it kind of softened down over the, the corner, if that makes sense. So then I just run my finger along the edge and smooth it out. Um, I didn't show it here, so I'm hoping that expl that explains it good enough. I will do a tutorial on that later if anyone needs extra help. So once the resin is smoothed across there really well, just take a torch or heat gun or something like that and just go across the, the entire thing a few times to get all the bubbles out and then just let it sit. And here we are. The resin cured beautifully. Look at this. This is really heavy actually. There's a lot of resin on here. Um, sorry about the glare. All right, so here it is all finished. I really would like to have shown you this outside, but it wasn't nice out at all. So I just have it on the wall here and you can see my reflection. It's um, it's really hard to photograph or video something once the resin is put on, but it looks so good in person. And you can see all the sparkles and iridescence and all that going through here. Um, so let me know what you think. This turned out really nice. I'm really happy I went with the resin after all. Leave me a comment. And like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching.